Hello, you all! I'm sure you are very excited for the fourth part in the series uh, of an introduction to using Builder and Results and IMAX uh, 3 of CMG's application. So, to remind you from the last video, and if you haven't seen that one, uh, check out the video description here and you can go and see the previous videos, or you can start from here. I'm going to show you today how to uh, make an aquifer, so you can just go and watch that part if you're only interested in that. So we got here this um, bottom hole prediction, bottom, not bottom hole, the overall reservoir pressure average. And that did not match what we saw here from uh, the field data. So what are you going to do? Now in, in real life, you know, you should try and make as many models as possible that will, you know, match this past, past um, pressure data. We're going to try for now just to make one model that will try to lift our reservoir pressure. And the way we can do that is by adding an aquifer on the bottom of the reservoir and that will go when you produce uh, the oil and gas, the water will just go and fill in that pore space so the pressure doesn't go down as much. So let us go and do that. So we were working on this model, best reservoir on planet. So let us go and drag it into Builder. And there we go. It's opening up. Great. And now we're, first of all, we can give it a different name because, yeah, you don't want to ruin the best reservoir on planet. What if something is not good with this aquifer? So let's call it the best reservoir on planet slash aquifer. Okay, and that's beautiful. We had a new name, and now we can play around and not screw up all the previous amazing work that we've done. So we are going to go into Reservoir, and da -da -da -da, it should be here, oh, Create Edit Aquifers. Now, a little note is sometimes you may see that as being grayed out. Well, I might, may have to do with the fact that sometimes, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, some things will look grayed out for some reason. The top reasons are, one, you're not in this probe mode. Two, is that you're not in the AJ2D aerial mode. Some things will only work if you're in the aerial mode. So if you see it grayed out, it's probably because of that. So we are going to create this aquifer connected to the bottom of the reservoir. Okay, now you can go and uh, connect it to user-selected grid blocks and then decide what area it's going to be connected to exactly. But we're not going to do that. So we're going to go very simple. Connected to the bottom of the reservoir. Then OK. For one bottle, we can leave all these the defaults. And we're going to keep Carter Tracy limited extent. Okay, and we're going to choose this R ratio table to be 3. And we're going to continue. And we're going to say uh, leakage is allowed. Perfect. And um, what is this? Okay, we've already done that. Okay, perfect. So that's it. We are all done for creating this aquifer. So we're going to click on OK. But nothing looked different, but believe me, something has changed. Don't worry. So now we're going to do one little thing, and that is we're going to enable, show you how to write a restart file. So let's say you're running a long simulation, trying to do some history matching. Well, you can do it in parts. If you write a restart file, next time you run a simulation, you can just start off from any given point where you left off. That way you don't have to calculate you know, things over again. So we're going to create a restart file so that when we make a prediction, we won't actually have to run the whole initial first year, you know, where we're doing the history matching. We can just run it from the prediction, from the prediction and onwards. So the way we're going to do that is go into IO control and restart. Okay, now let's go to do, 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 enable restart writing. And I'm going to go over here and well, right, this means I can enable restart anytime 2016-0101 onwards. So I'm just lazy, so I'm going to do that. Maybe you would want to do that. You would want to do it from later onwards to save some data space. But this is good for me right now, so I'm going to click on OK. Also, one other thing that we're going to make, um, make sure that we got right is so we can go to Simulation Results Output. And we're going to make sure that we have our output in the new SR3 format. I'm going to click on Okay, and now we want to run it. So, but before we run it, you have to make sure to press on save. Vital. 
Okay, so I press again just for good measure. I'm going to go and minimize this. And there we go. We have the best reservoir on this planet. Looks like it's been saved in the right time just a few seconds ago. I'm going to take it, hold it down, and drag it over to IMAX. And there we go. Uh, you may recall from previous tutorials, my computer is a bit slow. Signing it to it, signing into it from afar, so it's taking some time. Okay, it has finally come up, and I can just check it out, see what happens. I'm just gonna keep it in our processor C as one, like, but you could change it, like I said, to four. It's probably a better idea. And click on OK, and we see it right here. That's our beautiful thing. It's normal. It's waiting. Soon it's gonna be actually running. Up oh, there we go, it's running, submitted, started. Now this is a pretty fast run uh, like previously so within seconds we should probably be finished. Let's go once again and check out how it's progressing. Yeah, like I said this thing went really fast. It's already done. So let's go and see if we succeeded in getting our pressure to go higher. So we have the best reservoir on planet aquifer and we're going to take the sr3 file and we're going to drag it into results which is right there and it's going to open up for us actually we already have one open so let us close this no we don't want to save changes we have it right here open so we're just going to be lazy and go here into input and data sources I'm going to add a file right there. So we have it here in models, best reservoir on planet aquifer, SR3. Then now it's going to pop up over here. Great. And, oh, I mean, right there. We're going to go back to our time series where we had um, the average reservoir pressure, or at least it should have been. Well, I don't see it here anymore. Da -da 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 -da. Well, we're just going to create it again, I guess. It's not too bad. So let's go into here, and actually we'll show you this little trick. So if you, let's say you want to put in three curves at once. You can just highlight this, and all I did here is shift and take all of those. Entire field, the average um, pressure, and then I'm going to go into Add to New Plot. Oh, and look at this. Isn't this amazing? So if we look here, maybe we can change some coloring. There we go. Ah, uh, there, that's much nicer. Better to see what is going on. Let's change this line color. And this is such a great software for looking at the data. Just easily, Microsoft style, change all the colors and everything. Okay, so our this is our historical data. This in green is our old model with best reservoir on planet without aquifer. And this is best reservoir on planet with aquifer. So we noticed that we successfully uh, kept the pressure higher, like we got in the field data. So that's it. We are basically done with this little section. We also have one more section for this exercise, and that is making a prediction into the future. So stay tuned for the next exercise. And also, I'll make again one more point. In real life, you don't do you know one check and then immediately your pressure goes up you have to play around a little bit and you also have to make several models to try and match your historical data so this is just to show you how to use the software okay and in uh, future tutorials using CMOS we can show you how to make several models that will match your history data so that's it have a wonderful day